Talkers once again. Thank you very much for listening here to the analysis desk as we have fun wrapping it up. And we're going to have even more fun now as we go to Sims and D-Man for all of the action. Thanks, guys. Here we go. Match 53. Rich is joining me once again. It's Hello. a pretty deep south plane. It is. It cuts off quite a lot to the northern areas, and it makes Ensis home turf very tricky to get to. Let's yeah, this is, uh, I mean, not even, not even that, M19 even to up to Yasnaya. I, I mean, it's even a little bit tricky for uh, the, the Knights that are going to try and drift across. So we'll nope. see whether we adjustments. Crow crowd, Crow crowd going south. Knights going south. Okay, remember Knights? They went the tempo drop last yep. time. They might be doing the same again. It's up the west coast. Crow Crowd might be doing the same as well, so they need to be careful here. We also saw a point where uh, I think it was Crow Crowd who decided to push Raise Your Engine Prim last time we had this kind of flight path. Fears more than likely will opt to Nova. We have seen this one before, so it shouldn't be any kind of surprise to other people. Either that or they just long drop it home, but Nova would be a much better beneficial place for the now TSM. Usual spot, that'll be a long drop all the way over. They don't have to go to the crossroads and pick up the cars. G2, home territory, same for Jokers. Now, it's this west coast. That is very, very cluttered. Look mm. at all the, we've already got bullets going down. Drayden might even pick up a point himself. Has managed to force to run away from that one, but it's, uh, it's just finding vehicles galore now. What can you get? What can you pull out of the back here? Because three teams are all along that west coast and they're all looking for vehicles. The, I think the safest one's definitely going to be Raise Your Rangers because Prim's completely uncontested. I'm surprised at how, how, uh, how shallow they went trying to get down to long drop into Primoz. They've obviously tried to secure as many vehicles as they could knowing it was busy along there. But yeah, that's a, a big oof, isn't it? That's a, that's a pretty northern circle. Shooting range kind of centred up, so Ents are uh, kind of correct to continue going on their, their path. They did see that uh, it is completely free, so they'd probably actually end up going Saverni maybe instead. Just about to say that. They might do Saverni or shooting range, take somewhere that's a little bit more inland of Stalba. Um, Fares didn't actually go Nova. They, they actually did a long drop, surprisingly. Clearly this because no one's really contesting they're not doing yeah, any damage, yeah. so they're not even boots on the ground yet. They'll have the longest trip out of everyone by Raise Your Edge in Prim. But for the simple fact that now they'll be thinking, okay, there is a readjustment coming here from ENS. We have this. And the fact they don't have the Knights or NIP in Lippo, East Coast is completely free to. That's a very, yeah. very clear and as clear as their phase transition as we'll probably get maybe back of Stalber and up to those. Back to Stalber standard hills. phase, trans phase yeah, uh, open, route this one. Yeah. Open towards the garage, just uh, to the east side of Saverni. So, yeah, ends do choose go Saverni. They're sticking around there. Constantine, actually, from M19, uh, have chose not to go Yasnaya just yet, and actually instead loot around here, which puts them uh, pretty close. I think he's got uh, a second player near him as well, but Ents are going to just disengage now. Well, Squeaky doesn't want too close for them. He will go off towards the shooting range. And OP, of course, did... Gate camp Navi in the previous matchup and collect one of their players. I wonder if the uh, favour will be returned. Navi could end up sitting on one of those bridges. Uh, maybe actually the the standard camp uh, over to the right hand side of them at the moment uh, on that bridge because actually a relatively central spot considering. So players have slipped to. Not a substantial amount, but certainly more than what they probably like to. And Windstrike have jumped them. So we're 3-16. Uh, TSM eight points behind them in eighth place. It's going to start getting difficult for them now. They need to pull a big win out of the bag. Fares 3-16. 3-21 for Windstrike. And this is where it starts to get really, really scary. 3-30 Jokers. 3-32 NIP. 3-39 G2. Like, that is no longer, in my opinion... The fourth spot on for contestion. It's no, third yeah. as well. Like yep. this, this competition for London is completely open. Anyone's fair game. Absolutely, uh, G2 are not safe anymore. Like they were. NIP do come into crates and warehouse. They're just going to trade a couple of meds before they get their move in. Switch the scopes out. Uh, lots of territory up for grabs. Now we've seen NIP in the past actually go for the hillside, kind of just where uh, to the east of where Squeaky is on a similar circle to this. And I'm wondering if they're thinking maybe going to do that again. And that they take control of that large portion of hillside, sort of overlooking down on shooting range and down towards the crossroads. It is a really strong position. I just wonder if anyone's going to allow them to have that position 
here in the PEL because obviously that's been in former competitions, uh, never really been as strong a competition as there has been now. I suppose it all depends where that circle actually decides to swing because, don't get me wrong, shooting range can be a very, very, very strong position, but it's perpendicular to where the circle's going to be because mm. if you're coming downhill into shooting range, you're pretty much looking up. You've got that wall. You've also got a little divot just before the wall, like a trench. So basically, you have a good line of sight. More importantly, you have a good line of cover. Um, so it's a very strong position to defend. But not, offensively... Not shooting range itself, the hill there. That, yeah, that's what I mean. There, yeah. Compared to actually getting out of the shooting range and then moving yeah. upon that. They're really slow to move, in fairness. Uh, considering the circles up by them, NIP are pretty slack here uh, because you can see Vitality already moving, Windstriker actually ahead of them. They're coming out of Gatka. Uh, they've been pretty lapsadaisical, I think, in their approach. They were just trading meds in the uh, warehouse a little too long. Of course, they had to be careful they didn't get caught out by Navi as well. And they're actually going to take instead a relatively western path. It'll be interesting to see if DA set some kind of a bottleneck up. I think it'd be a nice play for points, to be honest, if, if they did, because they're up in that northern region. They could take the uh, the bridges coming out of Rozok and clamp it down, to be honest. Okay, there's two viable exit routes out of Roz if you need to do it, but you could potentially, there's two like little mini bridges just to the eastern side, camp them out and try and pick up some points on the rotations through. Fares, what do you expect? Standard scenario, TSM finally getting in the vehicles. Would you believe it? <laughs> we have Razor Edge not rotating yet. Team Liquid honking the horns at uh, Digital Athletics as Iro passes by. Wait. Path they're going is going straight towards Windstrike, but Windstrike, of course, is going for the standard gate camp. Uh, Team Liquid will turn right here. I, uh, you expect them to? Um, yeah, they will. There we go. Now they're turning north, so they are, they're going to turn away from that one. Digital Athletics, of course, you know, they start out in Rosok, so it's just a leap over the bridge for them. There's Windstrike camping out that bridge, as expected. Pretty sh pretty certain that somebody would land there. Uh, see if they can catch out, because you've got the likes of Crow Crowd, uh, Red Diamonds, and the Knights all coming from that direction. It's one of those points that you know is a choke point, and you know where people are going to be. The false stack can be extremely powerful, mainly because you can just put people in the windows and get an extra elevated line of sight. TSM playing it slow and steady. That's fine. Make sure they don't lose any people on rotation. They're a team that needs to do well here if they want to make that top four. They've just got to keep scouting ahead as well because they know G2's gone ahead of them. So they, they'll just keep pulling up, just check ahead. G2 not camping us. Okay, keep moving. Do the same again. Well, I mean, they're in the 300 pack, all right? They've crossed that threshold yeah. and they've got a little bit of a jump on ninth position. But it's still, it, it's a, you know, it might look like just a few points, but the problem is, and I keep saying this, this it's the most difficult thing about PUBG. It's okay you having a great game and having a big game. But you've got to rely on other people in front of yeah. you dropping yeah. the ball. I mean, first clan at the moment, a 13th and a 16th mm. position is absolutely not what we expect from that roster. Yeah, no, no, absolutely not. That's uh, It's going to be a challenge for them. They are doing their northern swing as expected. Uh, south side of Stahl, but meanwhile, Entz, of course, did start out into Severny, so they've got themselves a very easy area. They're just in that little shelter area by the shooting range. Raise your edge, just coming in. From the south, everybody will be in there. Red Diamonds went for the western bridge of Georgia Pole. They're going to be coming west of Navi, who've decided to take themselves a position. And we were talking about G2. That's not what they were aiming for there. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's not good. He may fire one day. Huh? Oh. He used to be a dear may fire. Oh, dear may fire. Yeah, oh, dear may fire. Okay. So that was yeah. a deeper problem than what I, what I, I expected. Mean, I could go well. Uh, I could have gone deeper because G2 are actually playing in League of Legends as well at the moment. <laughs> so, and Did Udia, you cast League of Legends. Udia once is a, obviously a League of Legends character. So uh, there we go. Oh, really? <gasps> yes. Okay. There we go. He's a bear man pig. Uh, <laughs> that's what, literally what he is. He's a bear man pig. Um, Brexco. Anyway, <laughs> Brexco, let's let's pull away from the, <laughs> the whole League of Legends thing. Uh, G2 themselves, they've took a really wide spread. Yoink. Oh my God, that is a shift. It's very rare do we see a northern heavy circle go so far down south. But the problem with this one is you've still got that basically smack through the middle. You have this Georgia Falls oh. to Rosok River all the way up to Yaz. This could still swing either side. At the moment, if I win strike, I am laughing. Yeah, because they've been holding that bridge camp, yep. and now that bridge camp is the central it's point. It's literal pinpoint center. <laughs> I still think this will go north, just because of the shape of the river. 
Whoa. But honestly, that could go anywhere. NIP wanted that compound. Now he beat them to it. The race was Good on. Lord, the luck brutal. of the Knights. The Knights are charging to that compound down low. The garage down by opposite uh, Windstrike. Crow Crowd are sitting in the crates at the moment. And Georgia Pole Red Diamonds are coming back into Georgia Pole North, uh, which is where a couple of the teams are going to have to start looking. Vitality and Team Liquid, we saw them uh, previously sitting on that hillside, both very close to one another. The Jokers, they're coming through the ruins. They're happy that they've took this slow approach. TSM also coming through the backside, the north side of Pachinki, all the way around the edge of ruins towards them. How have Crow Crowd got caught? How is this a thing? They were in crates. Mm. What are they doing? They didn't have to go for that push. They, they, I, they I guess they, want, they wanted a 2-2, right? But why? They're way too late at making that choice. A 2-2 is when you, you're going to split it because you want to take map advantage. They needed it to be on the bike the second that circle was popping. If they wanted that 2-2, they needed to be moving before the circle even moved. I mean, I get it, but like, no, that's that's a poor maneuver. It was just awful. They've paid for it. They've lost two. And even if it wasn't at this level, would you really not expect players Ooh. to be camping around those those angles and those cross? You know, they're bottlenecks. Oh, These players at this level know the bottlenecks, and you should too. M19, forced out wide by Entz. Uh, Phase Clan, by the way, have pulled into the uh, western side of shooting range, and Team Liquid have kind of got an eye on them. Uh, Team Liquid have got two players on the crash plane. Uh, and keeping an eye on Face Clan to their north M19 on a deep west rotate uh, because they've got nowhere else to go because they've dropped the ball again. So we've still got a good cluster of players up in the northern ridges just playing the hillside. 2-2 two -two for Liquid, four stack up front. The Vitality Face playing off the back foot here. Poor buggers just can't seem to get a rest. I mean, they go up north, they do their usual thing. It's their usual style of play, and all of a sudden the circle goes, no, <laughs> nope, and just completely nopes away from them. So now they have to be prepared that uh, an, an instant rotation might have to happen. They may as well stay on the bikes because uh, the time they get into the circle, it's about to change again. We'll see whether it shifts. I think that's why Aitzi is just yeah. often having a quick peek to see what's up front and centre, really. Um, he's on his own at the moment, driving around. And again, even if it is A, finding a better place to... I mean, Kratz just actually popped above his head, so that's, that's not too bad. It will focus a lot of teams towards him, maybe give away the position. But still, being preemptive here is the name of the game because this is going to go anywhere, and the migrations... you got to remember... <laughs> If you, depending on which side of the circle this goes, teams are going to be sitting pretty already. Good spot for jokers. That are, uh, everyone's played in that spot right in the Ruins Castle, and you've got a really good field of view uh, to take shots on them. Are they going to move away from this on the jokers? Because it will leave them in a horrible spot. It's a strong position, but it's going to leave them in a horrible spot. And yeah, they're going to try and rotate, trying to get over as quick as possible, because this whole area in the south now is kind of no man's land. We feel it is going to pull to the north, so everybody wants to get up there. Uh, Aitzi and FaZe Clan are actually going around the edge of uh, shooting range. Aitzi will collect that crate as well on route, and they actually probably going to be gifted. That's a pretty decent compound here, you know, that Vitality, yeah. they're kind of moving towards. Vitality, you've got two members running towards it at the moment. There's the crate. If FaZe are are quick in their movements. They will be able to get a really strong compound uh, away from Vitality. Vitality look to be going towards the... Oh, yeah, Vitality getting in there. They've scouted it. They're going to get. They're going to be phased to the punch. But FaZe do have one of their own, so they can get something off of this one. Liquid haven't reproduced like, deep into the circle. They've actually gone to the edge to try and play border control. A team that's going to have difficulties getting in now is TSM. We need to have a look at their POVs because G2 are front and centre oh, of going. Sunken City. This is going to nope, be brutal on the edge. Oh, Gustav's going to be the only one. They've kind of spotted, they've, they've ditched it away. Meanwhile, we're seeing Senor, of course, uh, vitally important jokers get as many points as they can. Uh, TSM averted danger. Uh, Team Liquid it's running good, good across the though. hillside of the north. They have Ents, of course, and Red Diamonds coming in near them as well. Yeah, I really like what Liquid's doing. They're literally going for kills. They're going to go play the border rather than go center. They will play the white and just watch people feed to them, essentially. There is two teams that will be crashing into them any second now. Red Where? Diamonds and Ents. Oh. It'll be a three-way on the north, um, but down here on the south Kane's is when it's going to get a bit difficult. Where in the world are M19 heading? And why is he not shooting his teammate? Like, everybody, raise your edge, Cup of Magic, are like, okay, we need to rotate north, go across the western north, Georgia Pole Bridge. 
M19, who were in North Georgia Poly, like, now we need to go south around the, a bridge. Uh, meanwhile, TSM absolutely bodying G2. Brixco now the last man standing, right next to Gustav. And this is, well, uh, some of the teams licking the lips at this one, I think. If they see G2 go down, M19 might beat them to the punch for 16th, though. I mean, Gustav went in as the lead scout, as he normally does. Lead fragger, ent entry fragger, lead scout, whatever you want to call it. He realized that they were both in there. He, he saw all of Move. G2. You're but getting grenaded. He, Move. For TSM, he actually called it out. So they all committed to it, even though he was on there on his own. G2 could have pushed him and flushed him out. But he's allowed TSM now to be on their ground. And G2, that is a bit of a balls up, in my opinion. That that literally, if, this, if they go out in 16th, they're on the verge of getting kicked out of top four. Yeah, definitely. And you can see he's just lying, hoping, trying to get his way. And as a solo player, you know, obviously the points, the way it's weighted, oh, that's another shift, you know. I mean, with the water, you'd kind of be Yeah, you knew, you knew it was going to pull yeah. away from the water, which is why you saw Jokers. They, they were in the castle, which is a great spot, but they had to get over that river. They knew it, uh, despite the great position they were in. Uh, it does manage to put them there. And again, I was talking about Vitality's compound. That is now absolutely king of the castle because they have the compound the big compound that is inside the circle and team liquid raise your edge red diamonds all clashing in the north i feel so sorry for raise your edge they've done the usual slow play they're coming out of the blue and there's three teams just bouncer in the edge of the white ends on one side liquid in the middle red diamond still just hunkering and staying alive i've no idea how m19 <laughs> is 16th again yeah there was a race they heard they heard that g2 wanted to go 16th and they said no we're not going to let you beat into that one we will go 16th first uh crow crowd also love to try and chase for that last place they go out in 15th place it's been a, a bad old time for those teams in this tournament they've been a little bit found out uh, Recrens ditched it. Oh, it's, it, it, mate, you, you got to realize the patch has changed a long time ago with the water. You don't send it for that lake anymore. Uh, <laughs> you got to remember that. Uh, by the way, oh, Jim's down. Uh, they're caught out in this fight with Ents at the moment in the top there. Yeah, I want to talk about the NIP. Yep. Their nades are overpowered. <laughs> what, as a team? <laughs> as a team, yeah. I mean, they are by far the best team of nade throwers in the world. And it wouldn't surprise me if he, every single player is probably packing about six or seven, yeah. maybe even more at a time. <laughs> I mean, they got four kills already. Uh, oh, Team Liquid just found themselves a hat full of kills. We knew they were getting close to one another with Ents and uh, the Knights, but they have just found Drayden completely napping. He was trying to be the forward scout. They've got Wanted right next to them, and Team Liquid could continue to pick up the kills. <gasps> Wanted, go on, do it, do it, do it. It's a good one. It's oh a good my. one. That's a great one. Oh, it catches. Samty gets the knock on to Jeeves. Is there any follow-ups? He's cooking it. He's cooking it. If he's going for it. Oh, wanted. Oh, you beauty. Raise your edge. Absolutely raising his donger right there as he catches them all out. That's insane. Three eliminations, two grenades. Almost a, a big job done here. He's coming into flush liquid, like. Thank you very much. I think Jemty is just running away. I'm surprised if he didn't go for it. I was very, very surprised. It's not as if he can't handle a fight or anything. Rory steps out in smoke, unfortunately, Ooh, the falls jokers. into the trap that they've set up on the bridge here. Out of the uh, fire, oh, she was out of the frying pan into the fire. Is G2 still alive? No, G2 got wiped. G2 go in the end, okay. Yeah, yeah I think so, yeah. Uh, who's oh, no, 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 Brix, Brix, Brix is still alive. I think he's still, still alive. Got this one solo player just chilling outside he's on the, the rock somewhere. The, the map's shrunk away from him, but he is still he's on the still rock behind okay. him, I believe. Yeah. So he's letting all this play out. Happy days for him. He's probably gone to the water. Home. Is this Kemba still down here. TSM been held back on the bridge. And again, this is the choke points that we're talking about. Being able to bottleneck teams like this is how you can pick up the points on a circle like this. Just use it and oh. abuse it. Know oh. the terrain. Know where the circle's going to force these engagements points, and points, make full points. use. Win strike, they're taking the shots on Jokers. This is all for points. These teams are so close to one another. The Jokers smashing TSM out there. That's going to give them a lot of problems, obviously. Uh, they need that one big game. If Wookiee gets taken down, Pittsburgh Knights, it's been a pretty bad week for them the last two weeks, really. They've sort of slipped out. They had a really good start, but it's kind of gone away from them. Uh, NIP, meanwhile, are continuing to pick up a big fight, and it's against the Red Diamond, so it's, one, it's a tough fight. Miraku and... NBS are quite a long way from that fight, so I'm not too sure it's going to go in their favour. There should be a GG for the Jokers. Well, you know what? The only thing that saves TSM here is if Windstrike just stabs the Jokers straight in the back and saves his life. And they're going for it. They're going aggressive. Dmash getting the heel off, trying as quick as he can. As the whole of Windstrike comes over, Senyu's trying to hold the angle, but he's in the open. He goes down low. 
Meanwhile, you can see Ents down in the uh, picture and picture there. They're just having a good old fun time running along. It's Windstrike. They're getting the stray down. The nades come in. Nuki lands one. Kemper down. Dimash down. And the Jokers, who were doing so, so well, go down in 12th place. <laughs> All this is going on. Wookie's like, you know what? It's time to run. He's got a level three crate <laughs> as well, which is going to be great. I'll just get geared to the nines. And then I'll have to play Wonders for his survivability because there's not really nothing else he can do against all these teams at a central circle. So he might as well just hunker down, get his level three helmet on, and pray that he's not spotted lying in the grass somewhere. NBS turns and faces. Estelana six times on the back looking for the rest of Red Diamonds. But a doozy might have him dead to rights if he gets the point here. Smack bang, bangs in between the eyes, and now oh. he moves on to the players, and they have to run against the blue because it's forcing them into this circle. Five kills, job done. Nine, Red Diamond's gone. Nine kills for NIP. Nine points in the bag. Where do they go from here? They are down to two. They lost players in it, but it doesn't matter because they've got those nine points confirmed already, and any other placement points will be substantial for them. Of course, the problem is they do have Ents nearby who are hunting them down from the northern side. Razor Edge also pushing in towards them. But here's the compound we were talking about that Vitality took control of. Brexco must have gone on a bike somehow yeah. and launched it in there. <laughs> There's no way you don't get up there <laughs> without some kind of vehicle. He's just appeared on the map from nowhere. Just this Ooh. one random blob. Razor Edge going for it. Cup of magic. You've got to be flushing that one out. That had to be a confirmed fight there. Wanted, who's going off at the moment. Gets himself one, gets himself another down. Cup of Magic finally lands it. Mikaz down and ends up being challenged by Raise Your Edge here. I finally do get an off angle on him, so I'm able to do some damage, but the bullets keep on going and the blue does the, the end of the job there. And the simple fact that he had so much commitment. NIP also getting involved in this one. Razor Edge Gaming, unfortunately, do go down. Cup of Magic certainly put up a valiant battle before doing so, I think. Miracle is hunting for Squeaky there. Did Ents lose two there in that engagement? Them Ents lost th three. Oh Squeaky's the last dear. man standing. Yeah, that oh was a, dear. That was some uh, mutually assured destruction going on I mean, there. if there's a man you want left on your team, I suppose it is Squeaky. Oh, win strike. This is your game. They're down low. That's the only thing I would say is going against them. Digital Athletics holding the ridge line. Everybody has to kind of push in against DA. Windstrike can just stab everyone in the back. Uber and FaZe Clan all still in here as well. They're chasing the points, but they are in a tricky off-angle position. We'll see whether they can benefit from it. Uber being the front man. He's got to be careful he doesn't get caught out by Volatility moving out the compound. It's a good preemptive read from them because they know that one compound that Vitality do have, they all have to essentially come out. You saw earlier on in one of the previous games where the Knights in the last one, in fact, were just demolished by TSM by stacking inside a tiny little compound. Fizz is still got a four stack up. They'll get ahead of them. And basically just wait with open arms here. They can hold the ridge line that they have and take control of this side of the map. Windstrike won't get involved. We know that when they have these kind of circles, which you've had the, in the past, they will play quite passive, sit back and try and go at it at range and make sure, I mean, we can see it on the map, they are very heavily spread along the southern most edge of the circle, and that's what they do. They spread out, they try and get at multiple angles on enemies uphill and pick up points steady. Oh, slowly found. but surely. 10 kills for NIP. That is laying a marker down, G2. You may well have gone. one alive, but your points have gone. You are no longer in third place. NIP have surpassed you. It's all about placements now as well as NIP. They're on the flank. They're coming <laughs> down. Digital Athletics is going to be the pressure. Beautiful death, trying to keep Vitality at bay. Look at Brexco in the background, just watching this play out. It's a beautiful death. He's been a nasty badger in the floor before. Catching players out. Managed to get that 2v1, no problem before. Vitality going to be careful they don't get stabbed. I love the fact he was just scoped in. This player just appears from nowhere in his, in his line of sight. Oh, they're backing into Brexco. They are, but they've also got the rest of DA that's lingering across there. Windstrike's causing what an first angle. Some problems. Here we go. Time to lay down the hammer. I like the fact that he's got the peep and creep. Steps out, steps back. NBS up and over. Grenades are out. 
Phaser looking, Phaser coming around the back. Phaser pushing for this one. They're going to try and get around the back of Vitality. Vitality are just being minced into the blender right now. They've got face to face. They're going to come around the side. Oh, there's what? a nade. Goodbye. What? NIP wiped out in seventh place. They got themselves another placement point though. So 11 points for NIP in this game. I think they may have nicked a kill. Uh, another one in there as well. So it may even be 12. Not too sure. <laughs> Meanwhile, TSM, Wookie, just pops out. The last man standing. Just finally get flushed down. Sixth place for them, but he put the damage on Windstrike and took Tixu down. Yep, he's eliminated one player from them, and now they're at a disadvantage if they have to go up against Rex. the first clan. Cool. They are sent to circle. They have repositioned. They have gone uphill, and they probably weren't expecting Wookie to be chilling there. I'm seeing Nookie with a Mark 14, which suggests he's got level 3 gear as well. That'll play dividends going into this late game, but FaZe, they are rather spread, but the problem is, is that Windstrike are taking multiple angles on them. For FaZe, they cannot afford to let Windstrike get kills on them and get placement over them because they are behind Windstrike currently. They need to get involved in everything they can, but it's Windstrike that are hunting FaZe Clan right now as Vitality goes go towards uh, Digital Athletics. Yeah, it's Windstrike that are really looking for the angles. Uh, there was a Mark 14 oh, I think I saw there as well. He dinked in with the nade, so the doors are open now. Windstrike can go for the flush here, but you got to be careful because there's still three members of Faze kicking it. Aix is in the back lines, and all of a sudden Vitality is trying to step up. The reason that he's on the back lines is to watch Vitality. They have like a, a battle here on two different fronts. I want to see Jorski's position. He's getting a flank right around the back of them. Fuzzface totally unaware. Jorski gets himself an angle, gets the shots down, but can't manage to get AT down, but he's caused enough problems. Mexi, meanwhile, catches Timmy off as guard, and now Vitality turn their attention this way. They hear the shots. They want to get involved, and now it is just an absolute mishmash. Digital Athletics have been left to get back on their feet as they pressure Vitality in the distance. And now, of course, in the picture and picture, that's the focus we're looking towards because it's really a battle for place. Sixth and seventh place going at it, all chasing NIP and G2. Mexi gets the re-knock, be able to put Windstrike down for now. Monkey steps up, but doesn't manage to knock that last player. Oh. One, two, three, line them. There we that's, go. That's Job bad for FaZe. Done. And now, yes, exactly, because now the alarm bells are ringing. Vitality are going to turn face and run head on directly into them. AT and Mexi tried to get in the back there, but they're too late. They're a little too late to the party, can they? They're going to have to take on Vitality. And you can see Jorski doing the damage. Uber down to nothing. Mexi gets flushed down. AT's down in trouble as well. He's going to get flushed by Monkey. Fajorski gets caught out, meanwhile, by Fuzzface down the bottom. He gets the flush on him. He is the... There's two Phase alive, two Windstrike alive, and three Vitality. And Uber, well, you're dead. I don't really see what else he can do, but we said that yesterday, and all of a sudden, he just went full Hercules mode and destroyed NIP. Uber finds Uber one. Uber picks up one, but now he's giving the game away. Now they know his position and his angle, and there's still three more to find. He's in a rough spot here. Timmy is going to take Fuzzface apart the second it moves. He's just waiting for that smoke. Sees him back away, gets the spray down, does the damage. Uber's picked up. We didn't catch a glimpse of that one, but Monkey will find him. Oh, there goes Fuzzface. Yonk. Nookie caught him with the angle, and that is a disaster for FaZe Clan because Windstrike will continue to stretch their lead over them, and they may actually surpass the Jokers now into fifth place. I think for Nookie and Timmy, you've just got to go for this one. You've got to get stuck in straight away because you're fighting an uphill battle, and there's four members of Vitality that are going to be spread looking down upon you. So if you can just get stuck into them hyper-aggressively, you might be able to catch them off guard. You have the center of the circle. They have to move towards you, but the strength in numbered. You're outmanned and outgunned here. Get stuck in, try to take a man down as a duo, and then work your way through and see what happens. It's a full-on 4v2, but that Mark 14 could pay dividends. It is Shadow that side. Monkey's the man. He's on the flank. He's already on the move around the side. He has been playing out of his mind to this morning already. I say this morning, it's, it's afternoon, but it's morning for every gamer involved. As Monkey continues to push around, he's looking towards Timmy. Keep your eyes on Timmy. That's where they're Full all coming automatic. from. Full <laughs> automatic. I didn't realize he had he's got the, the Wookiee uh, suit on as well. Nookie and a Wookiee. There we go. Timmy, oh, he landed so many hits, but Nasus comes in around the side, and now Nookie is the last man standing. Monkey was downed. But Nookie realizes he's in a 1v3. He just caught a glimpse of Nasus. That shot will give his position away. They'll be able to find him now as he goes to the tree. And Nasus will catch him down. It's Vitality.